Ladies and gentlemen, Arena Breakout is here, and after only two days live, it is already neck deep in controversy surrounding, you guessed it, monetization. Now this one is going to be a bit touchy for me and I'll probably spend a portion of this video playing the devil's advocate simply for the sake of. So please do let me know what you think, what your thoughts and feelings are on the situation. But Arena Breakout is here. It's live. It's coming from a studio out of the east, I believe somewhere maybe in uh, China. I'll have to double check that. But the game is is good i've been playing it since release it's good i like the way it feels i like the iteration on gameplay that it offers if you come from tarkov then you're going to be right at home here it does present a lower barrier to entry and some quality of life improvements that make things a little less cumbersome than tarkov does i will however say that still nothing quite compares to tarkov mainly the integration integration of all of the systems that Tarkov has in place, how they all operate in conjunction with one another. Then again, Tarkov has had quite a long time, seven, eight years roughly, to make all of those systems what they are today. Now, what is everyone up in arms about when it comes to Arena Breakout? The game has only been live for two days, and here we are. Everyone is up in arms about Arena Breakout because of the monetization model specifically surrounding the in-game currency otherwise known as Cohen which ironically enough sounds a lot like coin but it is pronounced Cohen. Now, the issue arises with the fact that players can load up the game, load up the marketplace within the game, and spend real money on in-game currency. So, I have 50 bucks in my pocket, I swipe my card or type it in online, and I get how much ever that is worth in Cohen, let's just say a, a thousand Cohen, in in-game currency. So, why is everybody so upset about this? Now, at first glance, it doesn't really seem like this is a, a new feature or a, a new mechanic as far as purchasing power in a lot of modern day games, especially free to play games. And in my opinion, I'll talk about this more later, I really don't see it going anywhere at all as a practice. Again, especially if the games that come out continue to release as free to play titles. There is going to be some form of monetization in the game that someone somewhere does not like. Apex tried to do this recently with their split battle pass, which is what everyone is already well conditioned to seeing and purchasing for in-game content. The battle pass, it's a one-time fee for the season. There's usually a couple iterations of it. Uh, in the case of Warzone, you have the base battle pass and then the black cell battle pass, etc, etc. You guys and gals know what I'm talking about. But here with Arena Breakout, we are seeing a marketplace where you can just simply buy in-game currency. You can use that currency like you would with the currency that you start off with in Tarkov or Arena Breakout or Grey Zone, whatever extraction shooter is your flavor of the month, to build out weapons, buy attachments for those weapons, buy gear, better gear better attachments, better weapons. It's not new, it's pretty familiar, so why is everyone so pissed about it? Well, the argument that I'm hearing the most is because if somebody has a large amount of disposable income, or perhaps is just wildly irresponsible and spends most of their income on video games and in video game content, battle passes, upgrades to weapons, skins, charms, whatever, then they can simply load up the game spend a mass amount of money and build out the best kits that the game has to offer. Okay, makes sense. I understand the argument. And I want to be clear about something too before I dive into my view on this argument. I do not support, at a fundamental level, this practice. I would rather pay for the game 
than to have this type of marketplace economy exist within the game. I don't think it's a good idea for the game's longevity and the community behind these games never responds to it well, ever, ever. They never respond to it well. It's not a good look for the game. It never does the game any favors. And it's simply a mechanic that the game shouldn't have as long as the game has a well rounded economic system that rewards players for going in and extracting with high value loot. It doesn't need to be in the game and I do not support the practice. However, this is where the devil's advocate in me is going to kick in. And the only reason it's going to kick in is because this game is actually damn good, man. And we have been needing some good games for a while. We've got Delta Force, we've got Arena Breakout, and we've got Spectre Divide, all which have released. We need new games. If the game sucked, if the game ran horribly, if the mechanics were trash, gunplay was trash, I wouldn't even think twice about it. But damn it, man, the game is good. It's actually fun to play, a lot of fun, and it does run really well. Mechanically, it's a very good game. So that's why I'm bringing my little pitchfork and taking pokes at the argument. My main point when I hear this coming from people is, okay, I get it. Some Chadley with an extra thousand dollars in his bank account to spend on Cheetos and in-game currency decides he's just going to drop a band and he's going to kit out a guy. He's really going to kit this guy out. Okay, so he does that. He goes into a raid. Maybe he wipes that whole lobby. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe he dies, and then everyone who killed him gets to take a bit of his loot. All of that, everyone can usually agree with, right? Where I think the real point of the argument comes into play is how often these people can do this. How often somebody can just spend 50, 100, $1,000 on the best in-game equipment and continue to outrank and outstack every other player in the lobby simply because they're willing and capable of spending that money. That's where I think it really becomes an issue because nobody is unfamiliar with spending money on in-game currency, Apex coins, COD points, nobody's unfamiliar with doing that. We do it on almost every other free-to-play game that we play. The issue comes down to what does that money allow you to do? And what people are having a problem with here is it allows you to buy the best gear in the game. Now, I do not believe that gives you an inherent long-term advantage if you're a shit player. You can buy all the gear that you want, you know, you think you're cool, you come in, you got all the fancy shit on that nobody else has. If you're a shit player, it's not going to matter much. It will matter. It's not going to matter much. And that brings me to the second prong on my, lo my little pitchfork here, which is that what percentage of the population... And let me be a little bit more specific when I say that. Not only what percentage of the population, but what percentage of the gaming population, the demographic of people that are gamers, the age group, and the countries that those gamers reside in, what percentage of people do you think have the economic spending power to put their credit card number into a game and buy, buy skins or buy weapon upgrades or buy uh, helmets and armor, whatever the case may be? What percentage of the gaming population ages 18 to let's just say 34 have the type of disposable income to say, I'm going to sit down and play an extraction shooter and every single time that I die and lose all of my gear and then have to spend another 200,000 in-game currency, I'm going to pull out my credit card and I'm going to spend $50 on that currency. In my mind, in my opinion, my humble opinion, and remember I'm playing devil, devil's advocate here on purpose now, I'm trying to get you to think. In my humble opinion, I think that that number is extreme low. I think the reason that streamers and content creators are so worried about it is because it's the streaming and content creation community that perpetuates these types of practices more than anyone else because they have the income.
mom to do it, or they feel obligated to do it to appease their audience by showing them, hey, I'm a fucking beef castle, man. I've got all the best shit. My guy is stacked. He's a yolk. I don't think that if you were to go outside and poll the general population of people who are playing video games after school or after work, that anyone is spending on a regular basis hundreds of dollars on in-game currency to buy shit. Again, that's just me, that's just my opinion. I do not agree with it being in the game. It shouldn't be in the game. It doesn't need to be in this type of game because the whole point of looting and obtaining high value gear and completing mission objectives in the game is so that you get more money to buy the better gear. Now, if you have the in-game Cohen, if you complete the events that are going on, if you complete the challenges that are going on, you are going to build in-game currency. Everything is made available to you as long as you have the money to buy it in-game currency. There's also the feature of buying in-game currency with real money, i.e. pay to win. I view it a little bit differently than that, but I do fully agree it's not a practice that has ever worked out for these types of games and it should not be in the game. That's the entire point of the game being difficult at higher levels and looting for higher value items. The third and final prong on my little pitchfork here is that does anyone really care? And I'm asking that question. I'm not speaking sarcastically or rhetorically. I want to know deep down, does anyone really care enough? Do you think anyone really cares enough to go out of their way to be spending hundreds or thousands of dollars to stack a guy in a raid just to have that guy potentially die, lose it all, and have to do it again over and over and over. I don't think so. I think that the general population of gamers, the general demographic of gamers, first of all, doesn't have the money to do it. Second of all, doesn't care enough and isn't invested enough in games to do it. Third, doesn't have the attention span to even stick with the game long enough to think about investing in it that way. And fourth, is only really thinking about it or concerned with it because content creators and streamers keep talking about how it's affecting the game, how it could affect, but they're often the ones who are seeing the practice maintain its livelihood by pleasing their community through the purchase of these types of items so that they can have the best gear for streams, so that they can have the best guns for videos, etc, etc. I'm going to wrap it up there, ladies and gentlemen. Please remember that I am not agreeing with this practice. I am simply poking the bear to represent my view and an alternative view to the situation. Purchasing in-game currency is not new. It's been in Apex. It's been in Fortnite. It's been in Call of Duty for years and years and years. I think the only reason people are so up in arms about it right now is, for one, because the game is new. It's the hot new thing to talk about. A lot of people were waiting to shit on the monetization model of this game, and the in-game currency directly translates to in-game gear, not just cosmetic items. I fully agree that that practice should not be implemented in this type of game or any game at all that gives you an advantage at any point, no matter how accessible that advantage may or not be to you at any given time. Let me know, please, what you think in the comments down below. Throw a like on the video if you enjoyed the viewpoint. It's totally free and helps a ton. We stream live three days a week here as well as on Twitch. There are links all over the channel as well as in the description of the video. Uh, Are you playing Arena Breakout? Are you having fun with it? I like the game a lot. I hate to say it, man, but damn, I really been waiting on some new shit and I like the game. I like the game. So please let me know what you think. I will see you guys online.